Israel may be the world's first cybersecurity nation. Israel offers training and education classes to its citizens as well as tax breaks to citizens and to business with government funding new technology ventures, particularly in cybersecurity. For Tech Republic and ZDNet, I'm Dan Patterson, and I'm speaking today uh, with Jonathan Gad of Simulate. Simulate is a breach response system. Uh, so penetration testing began really in earnest in the 1980s and hackers at that time would literally sometimes dumpster dive uh, and look for for anything that would allow them to access a company physically today that behavior has been replaced although not entirely by automated systems artificial intelligence bots and other technologies. So uh, Jonathan, thanks a lot for your time today. I wonder if you could first give us some context to the notion that Israel is a uh, cybersecurity or cyber first nation. Absolutely, Dan. Thank you very much uh, for organizing the interview and I really appreciate it. Uh, basically, um, Israel, as always, has had to uh, make the most of the resources that it has as a country under attack. Uh, and the latest uh, sphere of warfare obviously being cyber. For many, many years now, Israel has had to lead the cyber race in terms of technology and know-how uh, in defending itself. And uh, that really leads to a whole generation of very smart uh, cyber people that are uh, trained in the Israel Defense Forces and come out of there with a tremendous skill set and the ability to use the latest and greatest technologies to then go and create these amazing startups such as Simulate, and take the latest and greatest technologies to the commercial world and to enterprises globally. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about the technology uh, ecosystem of Israel? What are companies working on? What problems are they trying to solve? So basically, if we look at uh, cyber in particular, um, because of the guys, as I say, coming out of the uh, Defense Forces, are typically exposed to all the latest ways that hackers are working both in terms of attack and in terms of defense, that means that they are really at the bleeding edge of uh, the way cyber attacks happen. Uh, so taking that forward and, and adapting it to the way enterprises work is a key uh, step going from the uh, government or, or um, defense mechanisms to the enterprise world. And that's exactly what they do. And it, so, it ranges from anything from, uh, in, from intelligence through to uh, defense mechanisms through to breach mechanisms and, and, and a whole range of different stuff. Yeah, thanks for contextualizing uh, uh, some of the mechanics there. Uh, could you tell me how, uh, I, I say in the, the olden days or er, an earlier age of hacking, uh, hackers would search for any means of entry into a system. And that would sometimes entail literally dumpster diving to get an office pass or something that would make them look credible inside a system, which is a very human way to attack a company or an entity. Now, of course, everything is faster and it's automated. So how do you uh, uh, simulate a, a breach in and response on an enterprise level at massive scale. So you're absolutely right. The old way of doing things was very uh, manual, and that's true for pen testing as well. When I went to test my organization to see if I was safe, I would bring in a team of, uh, of uh, nice hackers, ethical hackers, and they would show me why I have issues. However, doing that uh, periodically, once a year, once a quarter, or once a month, is very problematic. And if the hackers are able to automate and use technology to get into the organization, obviously we need to simulate that in the best way possible. And that's exactly what we do at Simulate. So effectively what we're doing is we're taking all of the different vectors of attack. So let's say email, for example, where most of the uh, attacks were initiated over an email or phishing email, then uh, we'll simulate uh, an attack over email, but we'll do it with close to 4,000 weaponized emails being launched at the organization um, by the organizations, so they manage it completely themselves, and then they see exactly what manages to get through the email security perimeter and what is blocked by highlighting the issues of what gets through and then explaining to the customer exactly how to mitigate that will significantly increase the security posture going forward. So, email vector is just one example of a way of really significantly increasing your security posture 
by focusing on exactly where your issues are. And the way to do that is by doing continuous automated simulated cyber attacks. Um, and I'm glad that you mentioned that, that continuous part there. Uh, often we hear reports that it costs companies hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars because uh, uh, a breach can occur months or weeks ahead of discovery of the breach. So how do you, how should an enterprise company or a government organization properly monitor continuously uh, a network? So you're absolutely right. One of the biggest issues today is actually discovering that a breach has occurred. Uh, and if you assume that the technology you have in place is working all the time, then obviously that's the advantage that the hackers uh, have. So what we do is enable you to test all of those different vectors of attack, be it email, web, and also lateral movement. So if you've gone and invested in some kind of network security or deception technology, that is supposed to detect malware walking around on your network laterally. The question is, is it set up right? And is it detecting the latest and greatest pieces of malware? And again, one of the simulations that we do is a lateral movement simulation. So we provide you with a piece of malware which will literally act and work just like real malware. Of course, it won't do the bad stuff. It won't encrypt your, uh, your disks or try and steal data, but it will try and get across the network to the servers, to the Active Directory, and to wherever it can. And it will provide you with a very clear report showing you exactly where it did manage to get to from one PC across the network. And it will show you again mitigation steps you can take to hopefully stop that happening again in the future. Uh, and enterprise companies, just like SMBs and even consumers, it can often feel overwhelming when uh, I take a look at the, the scope of cyber threats facing me. Um, what are steps one, two, and three if I'm a decision maker at an enterprise company that I should do after a breach has occurred? So look, one of the biggest issues you have today is the issue of resource. Uh, finding a good team is very, very hard. Manpower in the high cyberspace is really, really a tough challenge globally today. And obviously the other one is budget. So uh, one of the things you need to do is understand where your weak points are. And if a breach has occurred and somebody's managed to get into one of the PCs on the network, you want to see exactly where they can get to from that point in time. And again, by highlighting your weak points, your weaknesses on the network or, or in the different um, vectors of attack, obviously you can focus all of your resources on exactly that. And there's many different technologies that are out there today that help you try and track where malware may have managed to get. But at the end of the day, by having a full simulation running, you can actually hopefully take um, that one step and stay ahead of the hackers, right? And make sure that your defenses are as good as possible, hopefully before the breaches actually uh, even occur. Jonathan Gadd at uh, Simulate. I, I wonder if you could leave us with a couple of predictions. Um, we started this year, ransomware was not new to anyone, but it exploded into the mainstream. Uh, other forms of, of malware, including cyber weapons, have really burst into the mainstream. So I wonder if you could forecast in the next, say, 18 to 36 months, uh, what threats face enterprise companies and, and how best should I buffer my company from upcoming cyber attacks? So look, I think at the end of the day, there's two main reasons for an organization to be hacked. One of them will be financial gains, so it'll be the ransomware, it'll be the stealing of personal information to hopefully, uh, for the hackers at least, to try and blackmail and perhaps get money that way. And the other one is um, stealing sensitive information, so intellectual property. So depending on the kind of organization you are, and I'm not talking about nation state here, obviously, right? So depending on the kind of organization you are, you have to really focus on um, building the best defense mechanisms you can for your crown jewels. So if it's intellectual property, then obviously keep that in a very safe place and make sure it's defended in the best way possible. Run the simulations like Simulate, as I mentioned earlier, to make sure that if the hackers are using new technologies and new methodologies, you are uh, as best defended as possible, specifically around your crown jewels. And again, we work today in an environment where everything is open. We all are constantly connected to the internet. Um, you know, we wanna be uh, on Facebook all the time and on LinkedIn all the time and all the other social media. And if our messaging isn't working, then 
it's like we've been disconnected from our oxygen that's supply. So yes, that's fine, keep it all open, but on the other hand, it needs to be monitored and, and uh, secured, and again, by at least simulating with the latest technologies what a hacker could potentially do, then you're getting a real heads up onto how to best protect your crown jewels. Thank you.